So, but uh, yeah, to begin with, let's talk about what functions are. So I think we have all seen this example, right? What I'm doing here is I have a keyword here. The name is def, D-E-F. The meaning is definition or define. I'm defining a function here. Function means purpose, right? Any thing or any human being, if there is a purpose, we call that this guy has some function. For example, we have taken the example of bridge. The bridge purpose is to connect, connect two cities over maybe the, maybe the river. And that is its purpose or the function. So what we are doing here is we are using this keyword to define the function and the function name is greet. And how to define the function? What is the syntax of the function? You all know. If you write greet with the parentheses and then this colon here, we have just defined a function. And whatever you, you have written inside this indentation block or basically from here to here, this is the block of the function. It is as simple as that. So this is actually the definition of the function, but it does not have any meaning unless somebody use that function. If you create a bridge between two different cities, city number one, city number two, if nobody uses the bridge, then basically it doesn't have any meaning, right? So this is kind of a bridge, but if you want to use it, then we need to call it. And how to call the function? Just name the function and basically have parentheses after that. For example, we use many times this print function. What we do? We write print, then parentheses, and whatever we write inside this course, it is going to be print as it is on your monitor. So somebody has written these statement for the print function. And what we are doing is we are just calling that function, calling that name, and that is it. And the major advantage is that you do not need to write all these statements when you are calling this function. Maybe the print function contains 100 lines of code, maybe 1,000 lines of code. Who knows, right? But if you are using the print function 10 times in your program, you do not need to write those 100 lines of code. You just need to say print and that this parenthesis, whatever you write inside it, it is going to be printed on the monitor. So in the last class, we discussed this. We discussed that when you can define any function and you can call that function in a program and the output of this program is going to be hello world, right? As I mentioned, definition doesn't mean anything. So when the compiler runs this program, it comes and see that this is the first statement in the program. This is the second statement in the program, but this is the definition of the function and it is not going to execute them unless somebody is calling it. And when it reaches to the third line of the program, it will see that somebody has called it function, right? It is going to check this file that whether it finds, whether, whether there is a function name as greet or not, if it finds, it is going to execute whatever inside this function body. It is as simple as that, right? So now we all know all these things and here is the topic which I would like to discuss with you first thing of today's lecture which are the parameters and arguments what are these right so what is happening here is overall i want to add two numbers and these numbers are maybe anything i do not know about them so that is why i have two variables right num1 and num2 right and if i want to add these two numbers and maybe i want to write a function so that Anybody can use this addition program any number of times in their program. So for that, I have defined a function. The name of the function is add numbers. Very, very simple. And you all know how to define the function. You just need to write def here. When Python interpreter read this, it understand that the programmer wants to, decide, uh, wants to define a particular number or sorry a particular function and the name of the function is add numbers and then you need to write uh, these parentheses but here is the thing now inside the parentheses i have two values num1 and num2 i do not know what these values are right but i know that this function should do addition of these two values sum1 num1 and num2 i'm not sure about that, that what these 
values are. So I'm presuming for now, these are two variables because if I do not know about the values exactly, I can store them into the memory location with the, with the name as number one and number two. And the memory location names are actually your variables and we have talked about it in the initial classes, right? So these number one and number two are two variables which actually are written inside this parenthesis. The meaning is that these num1 and num2 are available in the body of this function. The meaning is these number one, number two variables are, are available in the body of this function and we can add them together and we can store them in another variable. So I have defined another variable and the name of this variable is sum. And what I'm doing is I'm returning sum. What is the meaning of return statement? We have discussed last time, right? But if you do not know, that is perfectly fine. We wrote previous function, which was just the greet, right? And if I call it, what is going to happen? Basically, greet function is going to be executed. And what is there in the greet function? Somebody has written such a simple uh, print statement, hello world. This function is actually printing hello world. But it is not giving me anything, right? It is not returning me anything. Although it is a print statement, which a statement will be going onto the screen. But believe me, it is not returning anything to the caller. So when I call this function, it is going to print this value, but it is not going to give me any variable or anything, right? But try to understand this program. This program is adding two numbers, number one and number two, and returning the value as sum, right? This is the variable. It means that whoever is going to call this uh, function, which is add numbers, he will get something, right? He might be saving that something into another variable. For example, try to understand what I'm doing here is, I am calling that function add number, and the parenthesis, and you know that how to call the function. And whatever this function is going to reply, I will be putting that value into another variable, which is the result. And I'm printing that as right, as it is. But here is my thing, what these two numbers are, number one and number two. Actually, while defining the function, I'm saying, I am going to require two values, right? Because this function cannot work if I do not have these two values, number one and number two, right? So whoever is calling this function, please provide me two different values. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to inst uh, save that values in num1 and num2, and my function is going to be add them. So here, what I'm doing is, I am sending these two values, value number 20, value number 50, while calling this function, and this 20 will be going into number one, 50 will be going into number two, right? Now I have two values. Num1 is going to have 20, num2 is going to have 50, sum will be having 70, and what is going to be the return? Return statement is giving back as the sum. And basically, we will be saving that sum into this result variable. And I'm printing result. So basically, the output is going to be the sum of two numbers is actually 70. I can call this function again and again. For example, I can say add numbers 20 and 30. What is going to happen this time? This time. 20 will be going into the number one, 30 will be going into the number two, and the result is going to be 50. It is as simple as that. But where the concept of parameters and argument, I think you understand this, that whatever you are giving this, if you are giving this as the first position, it is going to be saved in the first position when you define the function. Whatever you, you give in the second position while calling the function, Basically, it is going to be there at the second position while defining the function. Very, very simple. So when you define the function here, these two variables are known as parameters. Just try to remember this thing, right? When you define the variable, sorry, when you define the function, whatever you define inside the parenthesis, it is actually your parameter value, right? So we have two parameters in this function, right? But when you call this function, the values you define here while calling the function are actually your argument. 
it is as simple as that right why two different names because the creator of python or basically any language these concepts are going to be uh, true for any other language right whenever you call function basically you call them with the argument whenever you define function you have the parameters and these should match there is a close relationship between argument and parameters because suppose if you say i am calling this function add underscore number and now i'm defining 20 30 and 70 no this is not going to work why because while calling the function you are defining three values but when you define a function it is just having only two values this is not making any sense and you are going to get the error as simple as that right so when you define the function means here whatever the variables you define here inside the parenthesis these are your parameters when you call this function whatever the variable whatever the point or the values or variables you define inside this these are going to be your arguments as simple as that right now maybe what we can do is we can see the parameters and argument in another example okay here you go so this program is as usual more closer to network engineers and the reason is we are talking about routers switches and servers here right so what is happening here guys i have a function definition which is this one device underscore info you all know how to define a function you just need to write def Def is a keyword which Python understand, and then info, right? And then parenthesis. But now, what you want to do here is you are defining three different parameters here. Maybe this is your parameter number one, this is your parameter number two, parameter number three. By defining these three parameters, you are saying or you want to showcase that whoever calls me, whoever calls this function, needs to send these three values if he or she doesn't send these three values then i'm not going to work because these are my requirement these are my parameters right if you send them then basically what i will do is i will print right suppose somebody is sending the ip address as 192.160.10.1 so basically it is going to say the function print statement is going to say 10.1 is maybe router and its host name is name it is as simple as that inside this function we have only one statement this is going to be executed one when you call this function from anywhere and how you are going to call this function just see the beauty of the program we have a list here you all know the list and inside the list we have three different element element number one element number two element number three believe me guys these are the element number these are not the index index could be zero one two you all know but the important point is that in this list every element is a list again so this is the example of nested list which we talked about in the last class right so inside this list we have first element which is having three different values ip address type of the device and basically the host name this is what we are storing again second and again third and now what we are talking here is we are having a for loop here you all understand the difference between while and for for understand how many times it wants to learn and where it's going to get this information by checking this my list how many elements are there in the list right using this in keyword so for loop is going to say that it needs to run three times why because this list is having three different items right and we have talked about list unpacking in the last class right you can use as many variables as you want here if these variables matches here if three values are here three values are here then basically these i this ip address is going to have 192.168.10.1 in the first iteration dev type router and host name as bgl core one hyphen router right so when this for loop execute for the first time it is going to have ip address as 10.1 device type as router and the host name as bgl whatever it is right when this loop is going to run second time you all understand that the ip address is going to be 21.1 this is switched and this is delhi 
third you all understand right this loop is going to be third time but what this loop is doing this loop is actually calling my function right how to call the function you just need to write the function and you just need to write the parenthesis but here is one specific condition if you want to call this function this function needs three different values why because when you defined it you define three parameters also parameter number one which is ip two which is type three which is name which is exactly right here right so when this list when this for loop is executing first time you all know ip address is going to contain 10.1 dev type is router and the third thing is bgl core these three values are going to be here ip dev type and host name right and this function gets whatever it needed if you have called it correctly because you are sending the three arguments so basically here we have argument number one argument number two argument number three relationship is there between parameters and argument right the numbers should match if you have three parameters while calling the function you should define three arguments right so you are going to print here and the output is going to be 192.168.10.1 is a router and its host name is bgl core one hyphen router in the second uh, uh, iteration of this loop or the second cycle of this loop you are going to get the value 20.1 here then switch here delhi here you're going to print this line it is absolutely very very simple and easy too i think with this you have the knowledge of what parameters are and what is the meaning of arguments these are just the term but i believe you understand it and this is what we are going to see here in this program right so what i'm going to do i am just making this first thing first as a comment and i add because i want to run this program right so program is really really simple you all know that right what is happening here is i have defined two numbers number one and number two and it is returning me the sum right if a program does not return anything we call it as a void program void means empty it is not giving me anything but if a program is returning me something which i can store somewhere it is actually a fruitful function although this is not the official term but some people call it as a fruitful why because your program is giving you some fruit because it is sending you a variable although it is not banana not apple not anything else not mango but it's a fruitful function why because it is giving you something you can store it and you are actually storing it into the result and printing it here so try to understand the concept here i am sending two arguments argument number one argument two, number two while calling this function and basically i have defined two parameters so these two values are matching and that is why there shouldn't be any problem as you can see here right if you see right here the sum of the two number is 70 which is correct but what if if i give another value just try to understand if i give 30 here what is going to happen let's check right so basically it is showing some problem it is saying add numbers take two positional argument but three were given and here's my problem it is having three different arguments but the parameters are only two it is not matching and that is why you are getting the error i think you understand it right what i can do it i can maybe to fix this i can have num3 here right and then basically i can add another value here which is num3 it is as simple as that and if you do it now but 20 50 20 and 30 it is going to give you the result as 100 right let's run it after clearing the screen and if you have any doubt or any anything any curious thing which is coming to your mind that what is going to happen if i change this or that please do ask me right and i can change it whatever you say right let's see that and sure enough we are getting that the sum of the number is 100 although the two number maybe we can write three here to make it even better and here you go right now let me show you the other thing the same example but actually here which is more closer to the network engineers like us right i have this list here and basically i'm doing the for loop and i'm doing the concept of list unpacking and you understand what is the meaning of list unpacking right 
and then I'm calling this function here by giving it necessary arguments. We have three arguments, a1, a2, a3. And here's three parameters by defining the function, p1, p2, p3, exactly match. We can run it. You are going to see three things, right? Because this loop, are, loop is going to run three times. Here you go. Let me do the clean here and see the beautiful output. 192.168.10.1 is a router and its host name is this one, right? I just want to tell you one thing again and again, and it's very, very important to understand, to uh, get the flow of this program. What is going to happen when you say Python interpreter should run this program? This is going to be the first line of the code. This is going to be the second line of the code. When Python interpreter say this is just the definition, Python interpreter is not going to execute it. And the reason is it is just a definition. Somebody has created the bridge between two cities, right? Maybe if nobody is going over it, it is not used. So basically definition is just a definition. Program is not going to execute these two statements unless somebody calls it, right? Here we have the list, which is the definition of the list. And now I am calling this function inside this for loop. And when you call this function, then basically control goes here and print statement is going to be executed with the help of these parameters and argument. It is as simple as that. Try to understand the flow of the program. But try to understand one more thing. You have defined something and now you can use it again and again as many times as you want. Just like the print function. Try to understand, we use print function is almost any program, right? And if we are using it, somebody has written that code for us and we are just utilizing it. We are just reusing some somebody else work or someone else work. It is as simple as that. Now, if you guys at any point of time uh, has any doubt, please do ask. Having said that, let's move to the next board where we are going to talk about, let's see this. Here we have this. I think Mr. Prakash is having a question. Prakash ji, please do ask your question. So uh, can you uh, tell us like uh, line by line, uh, what? flow where, where it will execute one by one yeah yeah okay. how the program okay let's go again to the program okay i think i have the program right here let me let me do this or maybe let's go the program here same thing and thank you for asking this question so here you go maybe i should explain you with the smaller program because the flow is going to be same okay here you go. Okay, so we have this program, right, which is having this function. So as, as you all know that this is line number one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, right? What will be happen here? What? So I am going to write that my file name is params.args, uh, sorry, underscore args.py. This is my file name. What I'm going to do, I'm going to write Python 3 or Python and then give this file name and then Python interpreter is going to read this file, right? But what is going to happen? This is going to be the first statement which is read by the interpreter. And here the interpreter will understand that the def meaning is that we have defined, we are, this programmer wants to define the function, right? It is not going to execute it because Till now, it doesn't know what is the meaning of num1, num2, num3, right? Because nobody has called it. So although this line is read, that, but nothing, no action has been taken. Because if the action has been taken, that program is going to showcase you error. You don't have num1, num2, and num3. Then how I am going to add it, right? It means that when Python interpreter read this def, it understands this is just a definition. I do not need to run this now. Right? The second code is, of course, part of the function. The third line is also part of the function. And that is why it is going to skip it. It is not going to do anything. But here is the thing, which is very, very important. In this line, Python interpreter understand that now somebody is calling this the function with these arguments, a1, a2, and a3. And he or she wants to install the result, whatever I am getting, from the function into the result. This statement is the first thing which is going to be executed, right? 
now python interpreter is going to say okay i have this function somewhere defined here now because this guy has asked for this function or call that function i am going to take these parameters a1 a2 a3 i will be uh, assigning them with the number one number two and number three and then basically i am going to sum it and then i will be returning the sum to whoever is calling me and the sum is going to be stored in the result because i am saying that whatever add number 20 50 30 is returning which is returning as a sum is going to be installed in the result and i am printing the result this is the second statement which is going to be executed are you with me mr prashant or next mr prakash yes yeah yeah uh, yeah got it. perfect mr ramu please do ask your question what's your question yeah actually uh where we find uh these predefined uh uh things which predefined things uh, Predefined functions. Uh, uh, like don't the, worry, the don't worry. Product. We will be talking about modules and so many things in in upcoming classes. But try to understand whatever I, we are. Uh, do not worry about it. Okay. Okay. I will be talking about it. So. Uh, one thing. Uh, uh -huh. That result. What are you mentioned? Right. What we have to call that some function or a. No, no. Variable. Result is basically your um, a variable, just like okay. a normal variable, right? But okay. try to understand. When we call this function, this is giving me something, right? This is giving me something back. This is a fruitful function. What this function is giving me? It is giving me sum. And what this sum is? This sum is again a variable, right? So when I call this function using this statement, what is going to happen? I will be, because I am calling it, so basically it is going to give me this sum as a result, right? And this I am actually copying it into this result value, right? And I'm printing this result because, as I mentioned previously, also that whatever we the variable we define inside the function, it is not available to the main program. Or whatever the variable we have here, it is not available inside the function. Whatever the variable we have, these variables have the local scope. Local scope means if it is inside the function, nobody has have understand the meaning of them, right? So I cannot just say print sum. If you call it print sum here, it is going to give you error. That it doesn't know sum, right? And that is why I'm defining a variable in the main program, which is storing the value of the result, sorry, which is storing the value of the sum as a result of this calling of this function. And then basically I'm printing the sum. It is as simple as that. Did you get it, okay. Mr. Prakash? Yeah, I have one other question also. Please, please, please the do print, ask. Thank you so much uh, for asking the, questions. Yeah. yeah. The print is like a, a global uh, function we are using in every program. So these are all predefined ones. And what are we creating is local to that program. You are right. Can it be called? Can it be called by uh, another program? Yes, and I operation? will exactly showcase you how we are going to do this because when we write a big programs, right? We want to use our code, right? And we can definitely. I will be showing you that how we can call our own function in different files. Okay. Okay. So okay. basically, this print function uh, is actually the inbuilt function, which comes as a file when you install Python, right? So somebody pretty good guy has written this print function, right? And we are just using them again and again. Maybe this print function contain 100 lines of code. So you do not need to write those 100 lines of code. You are just using the work of other. And believe me, we are going to do the same thing for many functions because they're, the Python community is huge. They are writing functions. There are many functions which are coming into the market daily, right? We just need to understand that our domain is networking. Whatever is in the networking, we need to use it. That's it. And believe me, programming is this much simple. I just wanted to let you know that what is the structure of the, uh, how we are going to use it, how we are going to use somebody else's work in our own program. And that is it.